Uh, so let's uh, move over to the tech bucket and just the takeaways in terms of technology and technology's impact right now is that, you know, number one, the tech lash uh, has gone full circle. If you remember this piece from the very beginning of COVID, let's say March 15th, Facebook was basically our hero. Uh, you know, uh, it enabled us to all come together and really figure out this craziness that many of us did not understand and connect with people all over the world. Uh, there was another piece with Sheryl Sandberg on the cover of the New York Times, uh, I think business section, uh, where it just said that with all all the tech lash and Facebook being accused of misinformation, fake news, and hate speech pre-corona, uh, you know, Facebook has definitely reconstituted their image. But as you know, uh, that has definitely taken a uh, uh, reverse perception perception and has taken a reversal in perception and culture because since uh in you know since floyd we have every uh advertiser many advertisers and brands boycotting facebook because of the hate speech uh we have seen that misinformation even stuff about the trans community and enabling right-wing uh information bubbling to the top and misinformation uh Facebook has definitely taken a nosedive in terms of cultural perception. And, you know, even though the story of big tech uh, going to Congress and the FCC and, you know, thinking about their role in our culture and uh, how many people, including uh, many areas, including Europe, have been saying that our tech companies have had too much power. This narrative is basically continuing um, in culture today. And as I taught in a couple weeks ago, you know, there were those four companies, the CEOs of Facebook, Apple, uh, Amazon, and uh, at least the fourth Google, uh, were testifying in front of Congress to help them understand that they're not being monopolistic. So this whole tech lash is definitely moving to the forefront of conversation again, when in the very beginning, and even now we're on Zoom, we're loving tech, tech is helping us. Tech is also, uh, whether you think it's effective or not, is enabling us to, uh, our, enabling our kids to continue with their education. Uh, meanwhile, in reaction and response, Facebook is pulling 22 point million hate speech posts in second quarter. Uh, those who the Stop to Hate uh, protest campaign still says that Facebook is not doing enough, but they're trying. Uh, the other thing about what's happening in technology right now is that the QAnon misinformation groups are, you know, disseminating misinformation all over Facebook and Twitter. Twitter has been trying really hard to stop them from continuing. Uh, TikTok, as we talked about last week in my theme, which was all about TikTok, if you missed it, it's on YouTube. It's also on my website, zyguy.com backslash culture class. Uh, you know, Trump has been, uh, you know, uh, encouraging Microsoft to buy TikTok away from ByteDance. And the rumors are that uh, Trump is going to work with Microsoft to eliminate TikTok from American culture. And uh, I guess the other thing that's really interesting, and especially according to the Chinese and the China Daily, is that Trump expects to get a cut of this business deal, which is crazy. And, you know, in the China Daily, the number one story is that critics are calling the U.S. move on TikTok a mafia deal. So China Daily shaping their culture's uh, way of thinking of what's happening right here. Uh, basically, you know, people are wondering if, if, uh, you know, now that Trump is actually also moving forward and saying that he's going to sue TikTok, uh, for what they're doing, uh, and, 
you know, there are many ways of thinking about whether Trump can actually do this. The consensus isn't because of freedom of speech and we have the right to get information anywhere around the world. So there's uh, that conversation in terms of what's happening in the TikTok conversation. And TikTok, basically the newest story, and many of you, I'm looking on social media, it's not really being disseminated, but there was a story just broken by the Wall Street Journal that said that TikTok has been tracking user data uh, by going around the Google infrastructure that prevents people from getting the data legally uh, from consumers. So they basically uh, went through this layer of encryption and uh, violated Google policy. So again, I've been talking a lot about TikTok. We're gonna talk a little bit about the consumer and cultural part of it. So all you need to know right now, if you're new to culture class and you weren't on last week, is that TikTok is the hottest social media craze right now. It started uh, by a company called ByteDance. Uh, that's a Chinese company and even though it uh, was birthed there or born, born there, it's like the biggest, hottest thing. And there's over 800 million subscribers. Just to put in perspective, there's 1.6 billion uh, people on Facebook. And you know there are many countries that have banned TikTok, including India, uh, because there have been some skirmishes on the border between India and China and other uh, political activities that have not, uh, that caused India to not trust TikTok. And Trump is basically doing the same thing. So we'll get to what TikTok has done culturally uh, to, call, uh, to media and entertainment and advertising in a sec. But just to finish the tech conversation, uh, you know, TikTok uh, fans are, you know, really upset about it. Uh, they don't really know what to do because this is basically their cable television. I'm a child of the 80s where I experienced Nickelodeon and HBO, uh, but TikTok has been their uh, medium of really helping them survive through this pandemic. And now that just for all of you brand people and consumer facing business people where, or anybody who wants to understand their kids, well, there have been other uh, types of social media platforms, Snapchat and Instagram, as we know, have been in our culture. Uh, for several years are really trying to pounce on this uh, TikTok uh, lack of trust all over the country. And, you know, they're slowly rising in consumer power. And for those of you who are obsessed with Instagram, uh, Facebook has created a new feature called Reels, which is very TikTok-ish in nature. Uh, and they actually launched it in India when they actually banned TikTok. So is Facebook going to, uh, pounce on uh, TikTok's uh, predominance in culture right now. And they're even offering money to reel in, as the Wall Street Journal says, uh, the creators from TikTok onto their platform. So that's what's happening in tech. What's also interesting to me about this is that Facebook is basically trying to show Congress they're not, not being monopolistic. They're accusing, Congress is accusing Facebook for monopolizing this sole social telecommunications network. So Facebook has Facebook with 1.6, 1 1.7 1 uh, million subscribers, more than like China, uh, more than the number of China, Chinese citizens, which is crazy. They own WeChat. They also own Giphy, which they just bought, and they also own Instagram, which as you know. So now they're really creating Reels, which is very TikTok-ish in nature, and they've been copying everything that Snapchat has been doing. So, you know, um, you know, is that monopolistic, whether you think of it or not, or whether Congress is going to think it or not, and whether even Biden, Biden has been talking a lot about the monopolistic nature of these big tech companies. So, uh, but he probably won't continue because they're really supporting him right now. So that's the tech bucket. 